In the previous lesson, what we did is we created an action that did a specific job. Now, Photoshop's a little bit different than some other programs like, say, for example, Illustrator. If you go in, oh, say, to the Swatches panel and you save colors in Illustrator or other things in Adobe Illustrator and you're working on a document and then you open a new document and that stuff isn't there. Illustrator is a very document-specific type of program. But if you did the previous lesson, I hope you did, you actually have an action that will be there whether you saved the document that you applied the action to or not, the action is going to be there. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and open up this one right here. Actually, it really doesn't matter which one you open. I want to apply my action to this image. This is going to be short and sweet. Now I can go up to the word window to get actions, but since I've opened it already, it's actually right over here, this little arrow. And there's my action set. If I click open, there it is. All I have to do, if my goal is to apply exactly that same type of look to this image, is select Color Restoration 1 and click the play button right down here. Now that took about maybe one second. It took us in the last lesson about 90 seconds to do that particular action. I've got actions that have 30 or 40 steps to them took me almost a half hour to make it, but then it can perform that action in a matter of seconds. So they're very fast, they're very efficient. But since that happened so quickly, let me show you a few other things here in this lesson. For example, let's say we like what this one did, but let's do this. I'm going to go up to history and I'm going to take this one back by clicking the snapshot to the original, as if we never did anything. Let's go back to actions. I like the action that I have. But what I would like to do is maybe create another action that uses a lot of the action I already have and add something else to it. So let's go ahead and go into Color Restoration 1 and drag it down on top of the new icon right down here, and that gives us a copy. Let's go ahead and double click on the name, and let's call this one, how about Color Restoration 2? That'll make it easy. So we have Color Restoration 1 and then 2. They're exactly the same. Let's go ahead and open this one up. Now, there's what we've done. If we click the bottom step and come up to this button right here, which is, of course, options for whatever panel you're on, you can see there is a lot of stuff up here. Now, this is an essentials course, basically, on Photoshop, and it's essentials on actions. But you could easily spend a couple of hours just talking about actions. I want to add something to the second action that makes it do one more thing. So what I can do is come over here and tell the computer to start recording. Now it's starting the record process. If I come, oh, I don't know, let's go to the word filter and maybe go down into something like uh, stylize and do an emboss. That's crazy, I understand that. Let's go ahead and give it a little bit more oomph. And go ahead and click OK. And that'll just prove it's going to work. And you can see there it is. Now we can stop. Don't forget you got to stop this thing. We can go back into history and we can click on this one to bring it back to its original. We go back to actions right now. And there's our second one. Let's go ahead and collapse that. Click right here and go ahead and try to make it work. So we come over and click the play button. You say, well, didn't really do much. Well, here's the thing. Remember what the first one did. It created a curves adjustment layer. Once it created the curves adjustment layer, basically it then stopped. Our action, since the last thing we selected was the curves adjustment layer, it's applying emboss to nothing. That's why it didn't change. So we've got to fix this. So let's go ahead and go back into history and Go back to the original, go back to Actions again. Open up Color Restoration 2. Now the problem is, is after this one right here, what we need to do is flatten the image out. Now in this case, there's nothing to flatten. So if I try to run it and then come up here and actually try to flatten it, you can see it's gone. So we're going to do this a little bit differently. What we're going to do is select here, because that's before Emboss. We're going to click this button again, and we're going to go down to 
insert menu item. Go ahead and select that item. We have to select a menu item and then click OK. Go up to the word layer on the pull down menu and come all the way down and say flatten the image. It will be here even though there's nothing to flatten. Click OK. Now you'll notice we don't have to stop it. It's because we just told it to insert a menu item. So we come back up to Color Restoration 2. And then we go ahead and this is ready to go. Let's make sure. Let's go ahead and click right here. And we try it again by clicking play. And this time it worked. I'm not saying that's what you want, obviously, but what I am saying about what's going on up here, as you can see, there is a lot of stuff up here that you can try out. You can code your own actions if you want to get into the code part of this. But once you've created one, you can do anything you want to it. What if you decide you do want it to flatten the image, you don't want the additional adjustment layer, but you no longer want the emboss? Well, you can select it right here and click this button right here and say delete the selection, click OK. So now we have two actions. We have one that does a color correction, but doesn't flatten the image out. And we have another one right here that actually flattens it out. The only difference is this one thing, but we added that. Actions give you a lot of control, but we're not done. Because although we've created some nice actions, simple but nice, we're only applying them to one image at a time. In the next lesson, what we're going to do is look at doing a batch onto the next.